Dead Rock is back, baby, and we got another, and I mean another great chapter in this series. We're only 11 chapters in. Last month, we literally had a main character death by one of the big bads of the series, but we managed to get something out of it at the end, which was the book with God's weakness. But now, we basically have another big task ahead of us, and the chapter brought us to a place where I wasn't expecting things to go. And it literally had me going for a few minutes there until we got to the last half. And I'm curious to see where things are going to progress from here. But before we jump right into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. I'm loving Dead Rock and I cannot wait to see what else we get from this series as things progress further. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into things. So chapter 11 of Dead Rock, titled deep cry and the character profile for the start of the chapter is their brand new home teacher for class f saru whose root is the great sage heavens which based off the design it's sun wukong so if he's got this type of design and he's their new homeroom teacher i wouldn't be surprised if he plays a role in the story at some point in the series but the chapter starts off with saru giving the homeroom class a job he essentially states that Dead Rock takes requests from the inhabitants of the demon world, and doing these jobs is basically another one of the extracurricular activities that the students at the school end up doing. Mikoto asks uh, what they're going to do, and Saru says that the request is by an old lady who lives in Deep Cry Forest, stating that there's a gang of bandits that are kind of settled up in that forest, and they're causing a lot of trouble, and she wants them to be driven out. Frey is obviously excited about rooting out some bandits, and Zalisha is basically asking who this old lady in the forest is, as she mentions someone called Magumage the Seal Wizard. And apparently, yes, this wizard is the one that made the request. And when this is confirmed, Zalisha is just all giddy with excitement, because apparently she's a very famous wizard. And Zalisha ends up stating that since she is the Seal Wizard, it's possible she might be able to break the seal on the book. As we cut back to three days later, back at the dorm, where Yakuto is trying to open up the book with God's weakness, but he can't. In order to help Yakuto, Frey offers to burn it, Ryzen offers to cut it, and Mikoto offers to try killing it? As everyone's like, what the heck are you, you three talking about? This is a book, what are you doing? But Zalisha just states that there's a seal, and that it seals with powerful magic, so... Even she can't break it, and it's very possible that she's not skilled or knowledgeable in sealing, so it makes sense why she couldn't break open the book herself. But back to present day, Zalisha is being all fangirly over the fact that they get to meet a famous wizard right now. As the class goes off to do their job, Saru calls out to Yakuto and says, If any of you die, I'll pick up your bones for you, in a very menacing looking panel. Now, this can be taken a few different ways. One is that he's basically sending them off to their deaths, and he's expecting to pick up some corpses. Or, he's just wishing them good luck in his own little, uh, dark humor-esque way. Or, something that fans have been speculating on, is that Saru could potentially be an ally in the wings, potentially waiting for his time to shine to save the class, and to see if they're trustworthy, and maybe he'll join them in their task to take down God, and maybe he'll help train them each individually to become stronger. I mean, this is a shonen battle series taking place in a school, even though this is a lot darker and not really the more traditional way where anyone can die at any time. The idea of a sensei figure or a master type figure in this series to help guide the main cast feels like it is a role that is missing. And if it's added in with this brand new homeroom teacher with Saru, then I'm all for it. I think it'd be great and it'd help level up the main cast. But that's all theories for now. Back to the chapter, we jump cut to the Deep Cry Forest, and man, this looks very cool. Machin was really going out loud with these landscape shots in this series. A whole menacing looking swamp with some miasma, some sh some snakes and stuff like that. It's really cool. I like how we're getting some nice landscape shots and we're seeing other places within this whole uh, alternate world. And I like everyone's different reactions to this, but Yakuto stays silent. Frey asks him what's wrong, and he says that something's been bothering me since they left. This seems too convenient. The book is sealed, and now there's a quest from someone who could potentially undo the seal. It could really be just a coincidence, and while Zalisha is probably the smartest person in this room outside of maybe Mikoto, she is too 
obviously enthusiastic about the fact that they're going to see someone that she admires and kind of wants to meet for a long time as a fellow wizard, stating that Yakuto is overthinking things, and that first off, there's no way that she would end up setting them up, so there's no really no real need to think about it all that much. And Zelisha is trustworthy, she does have her own thing, but Yakuto does have a good point. Literally, it's been three days since they managed to pull one over on the second strongest at Dead Rock, essentially, in terms of the faculty. And they have a very, a very dangerous thing in their possession that, obviously, the Vice Principal would want to get back. So, all this being incredibly convenient to find somebody that could potentially undo their seal, it is actually very reasonable to come to this conclusion if you really think about it. And I'm pretty sure, once we got this idea at the start of the chapter, everybody reading was like, this is probably a setup. This The possibility is out there. But as everyone's walking in through the forest, they notice something over in the forest. A type of gateway. And it's revealed that it's a level gate and they're wondering what it's doing there. Zelisha asks what this thing is. Ryzen asks Zelisha if she's gone through one to get through a different level of the demon world. But Zelisha reveals that she was actually born on this level 666. So she is in the very lower levels of this world. So she is incredibly strong. So that makes sense. And Zelisha just admits that she thought that there was some sort of stairway that connected the different layers, but it's revealed that there are thousands of miles between the different layers of the demon world. And so we get the exposition and honestly much needed because this is something that I didn't even think about too hard until it was brought up. But how can they end up going between the different uh, levels of the demon world? And so Mikoto just states that essentially they can more or less go to whatever level they want using these gates but they need a passage permit, and the game will only take them to a corresponding level. So whatever the permit says they have to go to, that's where they have to go to. Which makes sense, as that nobody can go to different layers when they aren't essentially allowed to. Even Frey says she hasn't seen one in the middle of a forest before, so this implies that it's mainly in populated areas or in towns or cities in these types of layers of the demon world. But right now it doesn't seem operational, so there's no real need to think about it all too hard. And this is honestly a very interesting thing because this is Chekhov's gun. We're introducing this type of, of device in this world. It'd be very, very weird if this wasn't brought back into the story, especially this one in particular in the middle of a forest that is pointed out to be weird. So we're definitely going to see something and this might actually end up saving the main cast from some sort of danger sometime down the road. So it is nice that we're getting this proper setup and I can't wait to see if this will help them in any way, shape, or form in future arcs. But as they are admiring the gate, all of a sudden an arrow comes in and shatters right through Hani. So this is, what, the third or fourth time Hani has been completely shattered and broken up into pieces within a, this year of publication for this manga. So I'm starting to see his running gag outside of calling people stupid for saying stupid questions or being repetitive, and another is him just being, well, incredibly fragile for being a clay doll, essentially. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to see Hani do too much right now, as he is quite literally being shattered every single arc at this point. So, and even uh, Zelisha points out that he got broken up again. As we then see that there are a ton of bandits that finally surrounded them. They came to the group, and they're all up in the trees. And when Nakuta points this out, Mikoto, with a sinister smile, says... So it seems as she uses her necromancy to create a legion of zombies. And this will never not look cool or kind of freaky as well. I like necromancers in stories. And seeing one as the, one of the main characters is still really cool to see. But she makes her zombie army essentially climb up all the trees. And we see in a multitude of different panels off screening all these different bandit fodder. As they are basically getting ripped apart and eaten alive. And I like how Ryzen still can't get used to Mikoto's magic and just says how gross it is. But more bandits show up and based off their designs, they're the exact same type of demons that Hani is. They seem to be clay, clay doll soldiers. So yeah, they're, we're seeing more of similar different uh, types of demons in this world. So it's really nice. We have to see an exploration on this. Yakuto tells Frey not to, not to fight in this. And I like how Frey assumes that she is incredibly fired up right now and asks why she can't fight. And Yakuto points out the incredibly logical thing is that she uses fire. They're in the middle of a forest. If she uses her powers now, the entire place will burn to ash. And so right now, she's just stuck putting Hani back together. And just like that, Ryzen and Yakuto just cut right through 
more of these clay bandits. And we got a cool full page of just them just looking badass, shattering these guys into pieces. We also see Mikoto unleashing more of her zombies against these bandits as they also get destroyed really quickly. And just like that, it seems like they quite easily rooted out and took out all of the bandits in the area. And this was a very easy mission. And Frey put Hani back together in the most conveniently wrong way possible. So, I wonder if anyone will ever get this guy right. I, I kind of, I'm starting to like this gag now. But, moving on, they have to go and find the person that sent the request. The magician, the ceiling one. And so, they head towards her house. And Zelisha is incredibly excited to meet the legendary ceiling wizard and that she's incredibly nervous. And then she's shocked, as well as everyone else, to notice in the next page, we see the ceiling wizard just essentially nailed to her front door, killed with nails in her arms, legs, and, her, and even her forehead. So just like that, the person that could help them is killed right off the bat. And as Zelisha is beginning to cry because essentially someone who previewed as an idol is dead, she immediately tells Mikoto to bring her back to life as a zombie so they can unseal the book that she's carrying with them. And as Mikoto is about to do this, a giant hand comes in and crushes the house. So now, in this glorious two-page spread, we see Bren is back, destroys the ceiling wizard's house, and is now face-to-face -face against Class F. And just like what happened with Hein, she is probably a bloody puddle on the ground that cannot be revived since it's not really a body anymore. And now everyone's come face to face with the Vice Principal. Bren ends up saying that you can't just take books out of the library. And Yakuto says, is this job you're doing, as Bren confirms this as well. Saying that it would be easy to kill them all at the school, but he needs to get that book back without God finding out. And the bandits were a sacrificial pawn in all of this, in his grand plan, essentially, to get back the book that they stole. So yeah, Yakuto pointed out the most logical thing at the very beginning of this chapter, and it came to pass. This was clearly a setup, and obviously confirmed to be a setup, by Bren in order to get the book back and also take out somebody that potentially could help them in the future. So, two birds, one stone, and also got rid of a bunch of pesky bandits as well. All in all, a pretty good plan, and makes sense. Also ties back to the start of the chapter when Sara was saying that if there are any bodies on the ground, he'll pick them up and stuff like that. It could also mean that he was in on this whole plan to begin with. But back to the chapter, Yakuto tells everyone to still themselves as now they're going to take on one of the strongest characters in the series. As Mikoto says, that seems like they got no choice. Ryzen doesn't even want to do this. He's not even actually involved. Frey says that it's time to take him down and you don't have to worry about me burning the forest, right? And Yakuto says he'll avenge Hein. Now, we don't get an image of Zelisha getting ready to fight, so maybe she's going to do some crafty stuff. But Brent says, goodness me, it seems you don't yet understand the might of those known as the four demon teachers. We are given that title because we are nearly as powerful as God. And Hani notices, which off screen he was brought back together flawlessly, which means he'll probably be shattered in the next chapter. Bren begins to morph and amalgamate himself again, but instead of just elongating his face to block people off for nightmare fuel, we end the chapter off in a two page spread as he says, Gigant form, as we reveal Bren's true, honestly, really cool and badass giant form as he says, Now let's begin our lesson ending the chapter. So, set up right away for them to face off against, essentially in the hierarchy of the school, the second strongest in this poll area. And so, yeah, I have no idea how they're going to get out of this. It's very obvious, based off of their previous confrontations, that they are now ready to face off against the top four of this entire academy, let alone God. And right now, the only person that could have helped them, more or less, with sealing is dead. And now they're facing against an opponent who is now going all out to make sure that they're dead and is even larger than they were before. So we're finding a literal titan at this point, a cyclops too, since he's got one eye. And man, this design is just very cool. But yeah, that was the chapter. I'm curious to see what's going to happen next. I'm curious to see if that portal from before in this chapter is going to just be their escape route and maybe they won't go back to Dead Rock, but they'll go somewhere else in order to avoid Bren's influence or whatever. Maybe Saru will show up if he does end up being an ally and helping them out. There's a lot of possibilities for this, and I'm curious to see how combat against Brennan is going to play out, considering that he's a giant and everyone else is smaller, like normal-sized people. 
And especially since Yakuto can't transform into a full-fledged dragon, which would have be very helpful in this one instance. But yeah, there's a lot to consider for the future of the series. And it's obvious they're going to lose, but I'm curious to see how this is going to play out. But that's it for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions of this chapter in the comment section down below. What do you think the fight's going to be like? How do you think they're going to get out of this? And if anyone else could potentially die in this confrontation? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel and shows you want to see more. Now with all that said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.